Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report, and we're here at the protest encampment at the University of Washington. Just been here for, what, three weeks now? Has it been three weeks? Oh, and this is one of the major messages, actually, that the students have been calling for. But it's grown quite large. We were here at the very beginning when it was just a couple of tents, and now it's grown to encompass the entire oh and here's another message it now encompasses the almost the do you think it's maybe the entire quad now it looks like it i think so pretty yeah. much so it's yeah it's growing a lot there are a lot of people here Tents everywhere. It's tent city for sure. I don't know the people on my two cents, the current main mouthpiece. Let's see what this says. In a three week armed conflict known as the Gaza Massacre, 1,400 Palestinians were killed, 5,303 wounded, 13 Israelis died from friendly fire. Excuse me, that was in 2008. And then 2012. So this is an informational banner outside of uh, the encampment. Oh, and look, there is a media center. We should go talk to them. Yeah, so it has definitely grown. It's pretty much the entire quad now, except for some very small areas of grass. So people have been here, what, like three weeks now? Commencement is coming up soon. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for Democracy Watch News. We're at the Quad, and one of the latest things is that the president of the college um, made a statement that she supports a ceasefire, uh, but also has been making a lot of statements which are a little bit threatening um, to the encampment. Watching the media, I've noticed that there has been a kind of a move towards, you know, Chain, turning people against the encampment. But this is what it looks like. And it's quite large. And it's still here after three weeks. But commencement is coming up. And it's possible that, you know, at any moment the police could move in. But I'm here to report tonight that everything is fine and it's totally peaceful. So, yeah, things have changed in a lot of different ways. It's almost hard to find your way around now. But this has the main, been the main, kind of the main gate for a long time of the, what they're calling the liberated zone. There's one of their messages to students and workers over profits and more. So this part of the encampment is where kind of all started the original circle of tents and it's still here. With a lot of signs. So a group of students approached the Board of Regents at the University of Washington during one of their meetings and spoke out uh, on their demands, which include uh, urging the, United, the uh, University of Washington to, to divest from Israel and to sever partnerships with companies like Boeing, uh, who you know, manufactures a lot of the planes being used uh, to bomb Gaza. Uh, their call to action also encompasses broader student and worker demands, such as union bargaining rights and divestment from the fossil fuel industry. Uh, so the Board of, Board of Regents at the University of Washington provided the following statement after an executive session. Quote, Board Chair David Zeke stated his appreciation for the speakers who presented their views during the public comment period and thanked the audience and the regents for listening and allowing the speakers to be heard, especially thanking those in attendance for the civility and respect that they demonstrated to all the speakers. He emphasized that the public comments reflected the passions and engagement with the world that our students bring to the U University of Washington. The divestment proposal process is clear and anyone with a proposal can take steps to initiate that process. So apparently, after speaking to some of the students tonight, they are trying to come up with a divestment proposal. Meanwhile, 
the president of the college had her own statement. University of Washington President Anna Marie Kause officially called for a ceasefire in Gaza, but stressed that the university will not boycott Israel or cut ties with Boeing. This is her statement, quote, The humanitarian crisis in Gaza, especially the extraordinary loss of lives and widespread starvation of civilians, including children, is heartbreaking. We join the calls by national and international leaders for a ceasefire that will include an end to military operations, the release of the hostages taking, taken by Hamas on October 7th, and a surge of humanitarian aid for Palestinians and all people in Gaza with the goal of achieving a lasting peace. But Kausay claims that the rhetoric in the protests at the university have become increasingly, quote, vile and anti-Semitic. Quote, I strongly support the right of protected free expression and understand that protest is by its very nature structured to be uncomfortable and bring attention to a cause. Institutions of higher education have been at the center of important social and political movements through the course of history. I also know that the issue is deeply personal to many in our community and in many cases is not only a matter of political perspective, but also of their core identity. Every day, she says, the encampment remains, though safety concerns escalate at the UW community. Kausi says the school will not engage with the demands of the students, saying that they run counter to academic freedom. She also confirmed through the University of Washington Investment Management Company that the university has, quote, no direct investments in Boeing or weapons manufacturers, unquote. Quote, while I strongly support free speech and peaceful protest, I also strongly support the rights of, our, of all our community members to live, learn, and work without fear. But every day the encampment remains, safety concerns escalate for our UW community and for the people in the encampment itself. She concluded by saying that calls for change, quote, will not be based on an encampment. So people are waiting to see when the police will show up to sweep the encampment at the University of Washington and the Quad, as I showed you in the earlier photos and uh, video, it's getting larger and larger. So we'll see what happens next. What happens next? The students are kind of on edge, the, the ones that I talked to tonight, thinking that uh, there could be a sweep at some point. And by all indications of past experiences in Seattle during the Black Lives Matter movement and the CHOP zone, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, and also uh, the Occupy Seattle encampments at Westlake Park and Seattle Central Community College, if they are any indication, the way that the city usually deals with encampment protests, protest encampments, is they send in the police to arrest people and confiscate people's property and tents. So, uh, we should not be surprised if we see that again. And I doubt that the protesters will all peace without an agreement with the uh, UW administration. So there could be a confrontation. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. And that's your latest update on the protest encampment at the University of Washington.